wonder how much Wayne was making back in like even when Wayne when he was on he was featured on everybody album. You know, like back in two thousand what six, seven. Ooh, the Sierra stuff. Oh, like he was featured going? on everything. Like Wayne took a whole year and did nothing. Nothing but features. features, yep. Yep. And I yep. want I w I wonder how much he was in for a feature. Dang, I wonder. Hmm. Whatever it was, you know, Birdman took most of it, but he gave it back. <laughs> he gave it back. <laughs> So he's just out on bun. Exactly. And this is what he had to say. Hello world, hello world, hello world. I'm sure you got the news by now. Um, I was involved in a very unfortunate incident on Friday morning. A very unfortunate incident. I want to thank everybody who's been praying for the family of the deceased and everybody who's been praying for my family. After a good, thorough investigation, my name will be cleared. Let God work. Watch God work. God bless. Thank you. Huh? He said, hello, world. Hello, world. Hello, world. <laughs> what that guy? <laughs> oh, hello, world. Let me know what. Let Wait, me hold on, hold on. What does his intro into the video have to do with? Anything? He's trying to put you down. <laughs> Let's go. I ain't got nothing to do with. It. Hello world. You did. Hello world. Okay. Hey. I mean, shots out. I mean, that's. Shots out. You did. Oh, yeah. Hey, baby. Shots out to him. I guess. Hey, baby. Uh, because I mean, so he. I'm assuming he's just out on bond. So yes, sir. With that being said, as they do a, as you seen, the rope. Investigation, his name will be clear. Clear. Okay, self defense. Hey, hey. Clear. If, if, self defense. If clear, that's, that's good, man. Um, Let's go. My my only question to you is what are we doing with our lives when Hurricane Chris is the first name, first topic of the show? Well, guess what? That he was the first topic of a lot of shows before a lot of shows had a time to even talk about the topic of discussion. We're talking about organic. We're talking about the ones that have put in the work. 
before where we are now. But that's why I shout out my people. And whatever you did and your contribute to this culture in game, in industry. But we will never forget. But shout out to you. Hurricane Chris is the opening subject of the show. Cause it's why. Cause I give you the real. What just I went mean, down. no, it no, just went I get down. that. I understand it that. It just went down. I get it, but Try, shut up, what to do with all of that? But Hurricane Chris, though, bro. Bro, you have to understand. Bill. Wait, hold on. What has Hurricane Chris done since like 2007? A lot. Like, you know, he, had, you know, he gave to the community. You know, very charitable. Same thing. Yeah, yeah. And he also made a lot of records. Now, these records that he made, syndicated. Now, when I say syndicated, guys, that means it played in places where you have never been. Moving on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got time. Moving on. I got a boy, little baby. He say he doing, a, hey, listen here, $100,000 for a verse. Lego, $100,000 for a verse. Drake status. Ain't bad, I mean. I, 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 hold on, what's the going, going rate for it first? Well, I want to let you know this. The baby has reached his new career heights in 2020. His last album, My Turn, have done exceptionally well. Exceptionally well. And it dropped in February. Now he went out and went on to do a deluxe Dulex a version six <laughs> six more songs. Yeah, I don't know. Say Dulex, Dulex, the Dulex. Okay, you don't do Dulex. You mean Deluxe? You got you got to swap the E and the U. You know, so I said it's not Dulex, it's Deluxe. So just move, swap the E and the U, and you'll be out. How you say Deluxe? Deluxe. Then we say on Deluxe apartment in the. Deluxe. Okay, he dropped the Deluxe part. You feel me? Six songs. And guess what? His magnitude of his career have reached surpassed to what? Hey, my wife, hundred thousand right here, a hundred thousand. Shout out to baby. Check out the phone with t- deal text. Hundred thousand. He's just talking. Hundred thousand. That's what I need. Full verse. That's cool. That's what's up. A hundred thousand. I wonder how much Wayne was making back in like. You remember when Wayne, when he was on, he was featured on everybody album. You know, like back in two thousand was. Six, seven. Ooh, the Sierra stuff. Oh, like he was featured on everything. Like Wayne took a whole year and did nothing, nothing but features. features. Yep, yep. And I, yep. Want, I, want, I wonder how much he was in for a feature. Man, I wonder. Hmm. Whatever it was, you know, Birdman took most of it, but he gave it back. <laughs> he gave it back. Uh, oh, man. That's what happens with entertainment. You don't need too much popping this week, but we still got to put you down. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Sound no, good, man. Um, I want to mosey on into my boy. Who the boy here? My partner, man. Ooh. The only black NASCAR driver we have out there racing NASCARs. Bubba. Bubba Wallace. Bubba. My boy, man. Okay, la- last week. Uh, was it last week? Uh, yeah. Now, hold up. Now, you got to put me down because I heard a whole lot of Okay, lot. so you, you remember I was telling you about... Uh, how uh, NASCAR had banned the Confederate flag, mm-hmm. Bubba had been driving the Black Lives Matter car, mm-hmm. all that good stuff, mm-hmm. uh, such great things. Well, you know, they were, unfortunately, in our home state this past week, the great state of Alabama. Throwing up the A, I ain't talking about Atlanta. I'm talking about the A, I'm talking about the, man, Alabama, keep going. Over. Okay. <laughs> um. Well, in Bubba's garage, uh, they found what they called a noose. Have been described as a noose. Tomorrow, the KK. Yeah, you know the rope they hang people with. Um, so instantly, NASCAR took this as a threat on Bubba's life. They took this as a um, hate crime. They called law enforcement. Law enforcement called the police. That directly. Oh, law enforcement called the police. You know what I mean. Okay. They called law enforcement. <laughs> Hold on. What law that? enforcement called the FBI is okay. what I'm trying to okay. say. Okay, okay. The director of the FBI called the Birmingham Bureau of the Federal Bureau of Investigations. Mm-hmm. 
and told them, dedicate all your resources to this. Right. The Birmingham chapter of the Federal Bureau of Investigation said 15 agents to Talladega, to the racetrack, to investigate this noose that was found. Um, after about 24 hours, they released a statement and said that the noose was actually a pull down for the garage door. But when I show y'all this picture, right? You tell me what you think it is. Here. Because I think it's a noose. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, I'm not saying it couldn't have been used to pull down the garage door. It could have been. And because they said that it had been there since 2019. They said it they just wasn't put there. I heard May of 2019. So, because yeah. that's when the first Talladega race is. Exactly. Yeah, one in May, one in October. Exactly. So, I'm not saying it wasn't there. And then also, those garages, when they get there, NASCAR randomly assigns them the garage. So, no way they would have known Bubba was going to get that garage. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, it they, it could have been, but you now have uh, people of the opposite race saying, oh, well, Bubba's a liar. He's another Jesse. He's another Jesse Smollett. But that's not true. Number one, that is a noose. Whether they're using it to pull down the garage or they're using it to catch a rat, hey, that's bro, a noose. I've seen a lot of garages pulled down without a noose. All without a noose, rope. exactly. Just a rope. Number two, that's a pretty thick rope. All right. Number three, Bubba didn't report it. NASCAR reported it. Bubba never saw it. That's a part, one of Bubba's teammates saw it, reported it to NASCAR. NASCAR called law enforcement. So they're calling. So a little, it, it look, hey, the water ain't clean right So here. they're the calling water. Bubba a liar, and him making up stories when it's not even Bubba's fault because he never technically saw it. Something ain't right. It's, 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 it's some out of plot. There's a lot of plot going on. I don't. I, I I really don't. I think it's pretty cutting. My personal opinion. I think it's cutting dry. I think what I think what we what we see is what it was. I think. Uh, Someone probably tied it into that little noose, not even thinking twice. Um, back in probably May or the October race of last year, Bubba just so happens to get that garage. One of his teammates reported it. NASCAR jumped on it, uh, called law enforcement. The FBI came in and investigated it. And so I don't think Bubba had, Bubba didn't know all of that. I don't think Bubba saw it until later. So I think everything is pretty cut and dry. My only problem is, with it is everybody's calling Bubba just a small bit. And that, that bothers me because, I mean, this legit could have been a threat on his life. They had to do the investigation just to find out. So shouts out to NASCAR. For and shout out to Bubba. And it's always shout out to Bubba. Man, I, that's my new favorite driver. Man, check this out here, man. That's crazy that 15 agents came down off maybe a utility guy that was told <laughs> to go to the garage and tie him like and just tie a knot, he so happened to tie it like that. And they wasted federal funds. 15 agents. 15 agents. You know they all came down there in Black Crown Vicks. Ready. That's 15 Black Crown Vicks. Unmarked. The federal government had to, had to deploy to go look at a rope. But. To pull down a garage. What you got for me, B? <laughs> um, speaking of the opposite race, mm -hmm. Colin Bubba, Jesse Smollett. Jesse Smoke, what her name is? Smollett. Smollett. Um, I wanted to talk about these cringe-worthy videos. Mm, mm, mm. Starting with number one. Here we go. Oh, boy. Okay. Okay. All of our white race, and we just heard about one race in all of humanity, but all we stand here, Lord, confessing, repenting, Lord. So, in this video, as you can see, it's, a, I guess it's a small town or a group of a city or somebody, but they're all gathered around this group of black people that's pretty much sitting up on this little platform, washing their feet. Um... Look, I get the gesture, and this is just my opinion. I definitely want to get your thoughts on it. I get the gesture, and I get what they're trying to do. But come on, y'all. Like, dog. Fake is what I call it. Keep going. I don't care if it's fake or real. I don't need you to wash my feet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just, just dog, just join in the protest. No. Uh, 
this is what I think. It won't be no process. If you want to, say, don't join my feet. So, it would have never been feet to join if everything you kneeling for, you would have stood for then and not now. Well, I mean, I get it. Every everybody's not perfect, so people have things that they, uh, they have sins that they have to repent for. But how I feel about that, like I get it. If you feel like you have a need to repent for the sin, if you feel like you have been prejudiced, um, if you feel like you have profiled or whatever the case may be, repent that sin to Christ and then change your actions. I don't need you to wash my feet. I, I don't know. That's just my thoughts on that. Could be wrong. Other people could feel differently. Some people could feel like, you know, like, it needs to happen. Me personally, I don't want that to happen. And as a matter of fact, <laughs> let me go to the second video because it's even more cringy. Talk right? equalizer. When he came to the cross, he came to equalize everybody, to take slaves and make them equal to the free. As you can see in this one, it's, an, it's another foot washing video. Uh, it's a pastor. He is washing. He called his young man out of the uh, congregation and told, and told him to have a seat and he washed his feet. Look, I get what foot washing is. I get why it's done. But man, come put yourself in that black guy's position. This man just randomly called you out of the congregation, told your brother to have a seat, and he started washing his feet, looking, <laughs> looking deep into his eyes. And just, you know what I'm saying, Speak, speaking good over his life, I get, hey, I'm with your pastor on that. But, man, I, that would be so awkward for me. I, I don't know. I'm going to be weird with you. I'm going to be so real with you. I'm going to be so real with you. I don't know what's going on with the washing of the feet. But I'm trying to figure out what is the difference with Cubs, the white man telling Cubs to come down. And he's like, look into his eyes and run. What's the difference between... <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference between that and Lin Lin doing the same thing on the corner at the shop? Ning Ning, Ling Ling, come in, come in by. I rub your feet. I the, the, the I rub your feet. I rub your feet. I give you for. I rub your feet. What What the difference? I rub your feet. I look in your eye while I rub your feet. The difference. What's the difference? The difference is when you go in that shop, you're paying them to not just rub your feet. They're providing a service uh -huh. for you. These pastors, you're not paying them to provide their service. These white people are not, you're not paying them to provide their service. That's their way. I guess why it's so cringy for me is because that's their way of trying to, um, I guess, to Yeah, I'm sorry. Themselves. I'm so sorry and for apologize. all our folks yeah. did. I and, see, and, uh, that's not the answer. That's, that's I will rub your feet me. to apologize. I well, see what you're saying. No, no, well, they're rubbing your, their feet to show that, that they're humbling themselves up under you. But I don't need you to do that for me. What you need them to do for you, BB? Man, like, no, mm -hmm. just look. Start mm -hmm. contacting your uh, your uh, Congress people and your senators. Let's try to get some laws changed. Just like, for instance, when the Democratic uh, House members, when they walked in the uh, House chambers and they had the Kente cloths on, mm -hmm. and they all kneeled for eight minutes and 46 mm -hmm. seconds, and Nancy Pelosi was kneeling, no her knees were hurting. Mm -hmm. I don't need y'all to do that. That don't, mean, that, that don't mean I see. So that what the rubbing feet from these folk be is basically saying, "Oh, I'm so sorry how we've been over you for so it's, many years." That's not what I need. No, I don't need though. that. That's why these folk rub feet. That's why they rub oh, feet. Oh yeah, yeah, bro. that's pretty cool. But then it goes to the last video. Now the last video, I'm gonna be 100 percent with you, man. I came across it on uh, Twitter. You know, I think it was probably the day after it happened. Not, I'm gonna be 100% with you, bro. I said it until because it, it, it hit me, it caught me off guard in the midst of everything that was going on. I think this was back when the protest was at their peak, their peak. So, you know, all these emotions, and I ran across this video and I really stopped and I listened to it and I was really watching the people participating, and it brought raw emotions out of me, man. Video, Let me check it out, check man. It out. God. We're not shaming anybody, guys. We're just humbling ourselves before you. Yes, Lord. You brought the thunder and rain today, God. Because Satan takes the hell today. Father, in Jesus' name, you get the victory. Father, we ask for forgiveness from our black brothers and sisters for years and years of racism, of systematic racism. Mm. 
So that one, that, I mean, it's self-explanatory, man. They were just kneeling and praying in front of them. I um, don't like the fact that the black people were standing and the white people were kneeling. Um, but I, I do. I <laughs> get. Cause we've been kneeling for what? I do. <laughs> what? I get. I do. But <laughs> I get. I get. I get. I get. I get what it was. Uh, I think idea of prep that is that's what's needed hey listen here, man let me tell you don't something. watch my feet let me tell you something me. let me tell you something don't watch my feet pray for me but listen here, you seen that video and you seen all of them guess what god said guess what god said who's first will be last and who last will be first so in that image you seen who was first and who was kneeling and who was last become first so you see who's standing and two cups out it it's live legit it's big god I'm sorry, cuz. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry, cuz. I'm cuz. You preaching, cuz. Oh, oh. You preaching. Big God. I'm talking about the real one now. The real one. The real one now. Man, listen here. Stay tuned. Stay focused. Because once again, who's first will be last. And who last will be first. And guess how you see us now in this day on this earth. Stay focused, big dog. All we right. We finna go up. All right. We finna go up. Moving on from all of that. Mm-hmm. Moving on from all of that. What's um, ask you a question. What's up? What's the best era of hip hop? The eighties, the nineties, the two thousands, or the twenty tens? The nineties. <laughs> you know, I'm a nineties baby. You yeah. sure? Cause I was born in nineteen ninety. We brought this. I'm not talking about what year you were born. I'm talking about you sure that's the best era. Cause I would say them two thousands are 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 pushing. They're giving you a run for your money. No 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 yeah. no 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 no. Yes they are. There's not a big in pop in two thousand. <laughs> There's not a big in pop still talked about today in two thousand. You did Biggie and Pop nineties. I'm talking about now. Listen, we can't forget about the ones that set the ways before. Before, bro, if you say anything about the '80s, bro, I mean to kick you off this show, bro. Nobody in the '80s was sniffing. Nobody's between the '90s and the two. Nobody in the '80s were sniffing anybody in the '90s and the 2000s. The 2010s, I give you that. The, the babies, they 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 lost. But okay, okay. Hmm. <laughs> kick me off. '90s will kick him off. Tell me who in the '80s. That had a bigger wave than anybody in the nineties. Tell me anybody in the two thousands that had a bigger wave. Now we could talk about modern, of course, because we still live in modern. But let these folk be wiped away for twenty years and still be talked about. Who was that in the eighties? Who was that in two thousand? And who was that in twenty ten? But it's, but but okay. Here, here's the thing. If Biggie, instead of Biggie dying, and they don't even on. get a chance. Listen to me. Listen to me. Instead, instead of Biggie dying, if Biggie just never released another album, he would not still be talked about to this day. That's what I'm trying to tell you. We never got a chance to produce the records that but everybody no, in the eighty can come back and do. You're not hearing me though. You're 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 not hearing me. If Biggie never released another album and he didn't die, if he just didn't release another album, he would not be talked about the way he's talked about today. I don't understand what you're it was, saying. It was because I, of the I, way I, he I died. I understand that, but you got people that still living. Still living and still, I'm talking about can't compare, but you still got people that are still living, like the Wings of the world. You feel me? The Weezes of the world. Like, you feel me? No, he 99, 2000. Do you not remember? Back that thing up. Who was on that? Back that thing Thank up. You for the 99 and the 2000. So, so would you count him in, in the 90s or the 2000s? I would say his, his success came in the 2000s. But I started, now. His, his start date. When they asked you on a job, when you start, his start date. But his success me? came in the 2000s. Wayne didn't officially, Wayne didn't become Wheezy Elf until probably 2006. Probably then, but guess when I started. Guess what, and if I was starting in 2006, I can go off Wheezy then. It took the build up to even me to get there, to where y'all can take that and go there with, you feel me? 90, 90s, cuz, ain't no way around it. Uh, John ja Rule? Chingy? What would you do without? Oh, come on, man. Huh? Ja Rule, you can give me Ja Rule. I like how you do Chingy. it right there. I got it. Nelly. Dilemma. Luda. Uh, ooh, I got the uh, chicken. Uh, uh, Bill, uh, Bill, Ch chicken, 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 Bill. Bill. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
Lil John. East Side Boy. Um, who else? You want you, you what you doing? Your two thousand? Yeah, I'm not two thousand, man. Um, I go that nine and ain't gonna stop. Twister. Keep doing your thing. Twister. Chicago. Shy. Uh, All right. Dang. Fifty Cent. It's your birthday. Game. I'm talking about West Coast Shawty. Young Buck. I'm talking about Memphis T. Young Jock. I'm talking about <laughs> David Banner. T Pain. Come on, has- man. I could do this all day, bro. Hey. Half of them rappers, I don't even think they're good. I just needed somebody to name. You know what, bro? I ain't even gonna go back and forth with you. Come okay, on. I agree with you. We ain't even gotta do it. I agree with you. The 90s is yeah, way I ain't better than Come on, God. I'm just on, trying, trying to find something to argue about. Uh, last thing I got, The come Simpsons. Come on, we'll get up out of here. What we got? The Simpsons has said that uh, they would no longer use white actors to voice over black characters. And because of that, um, the guy that does Cleveland on the family show, mm-hmm. the family guy, mm-hmm. he said that um, he's retiring from the show because he feels like a black actor needs to take over that role. And it's supposed to have been like that. Who's first will be last and who last will be first. And I'm talking about my boy Cliff, a black role. It's the, what we see, it should have been and not betrayed it as such. Yeah. But guess what? It's on the way. What? Yeah. That's it, bro. Take us on. You looking on out? Y'all right? No, man. I was, uh, uh, nah. Mm? I'm good. I need, I really want to show the people what you're looking at right now, because this is crazy what I see. <laughs> this is crazy what I see. <laughs> <laughs> they can't see that. <laughs> what did you do? We're good. Hey, it's your boy Q Smith. Hey, man, we want to check in with the people, man. It's live, lit, and legit. And we had to check in one time for the one time, like all the time. You did. Blessed by the best. Thankful, grateful, humble for you and much more and for him. You did. It's your boy Q Smith and your boy. It must be. Hey, and they can find us with the merch, lively and legit. At Gmail. That's the email. You did. Get your shirts through the mail. You did. What's up? At a low price. And also, we have the page, Live, Lit, and Legit on Twitter. And we have the Live, Lit, and Legit on Facebook. You did. I'm going to say it one more time. Live, Lit, Legit on Twitter. And Live, Lit, and Legit on Facebook. Two Cups, Charlie, and it's your boy B. We keep it Live, Lit, and Legit, and we love you like we love me. You did. <laughs> it's your boy Q Smith and your boy B. Live, Lit, and Legit. Hey, that's, that's a okay.